Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is an assembly and demonstration video for my talking combination lock circuit. Um, this is what it comes with. We're going to go step by step and assemble it. It comes with a custom PCB, uh, a uh, mini speaker that plugs directly into the board, two two-pin terminal blocks, 5-volt relay, a diode, 11 2K ohm resistors, a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, two ceramic 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitors, a 160k ohm resistor, two 10k ohm resistors, a 100k ohm resistor, and 200, uh, or sorry, 400, two 470 ohm resistors, as well a uh, green LED down here, uh, a red LED, a push button switch, two two pin headers and a single header header connector a 2N2222 NPN transistor 5 volt regulator 7805 10 monetary push buttons sorry <laughs> 10 10 total <laughs> I should have put this over here um, a uh, an OTP recording IC program microcontroller and an 18 pin socket and a 16 pin socket dip of course so what we're gonna do is we're going to assemble this piece by piece. And I always like to start with the resistors because they're the least invas evasive on the board and uh, very easy to, 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 to do because there's no polarity. Uh, the 160K resistor is placed here. It's labeled OSC for oscillator. So it's, it's labeled 168K, but, I've got a, but it, the kit includes a 160K resistor. Uh, R13 is labeled R1310K. R11 is labeled R11 100K, so place your your single 100K ohm resistor here. Um, R16 is uh, labeled 10K, so place your other 10K ohm resistor here. All of the other uh, resistors are labeled 2K, with exception to R15, which is labeled 470R for 470 ohm, and uh, R14 which is also 470 ohm. All of the rest of the, of the resistors in this area here, 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 are where you place your uh, 2K ohm resistors. And of course, all the values are labeled on the board. So we're going to solder all of those into place. Again, no polarity. Just make sure you put the right values in the right spot. And next, we will do our capacitors and our buttons. Okay. The buttons are easy. They are placed in S1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And they, should, they only fit one way. They should pop into place. Make sure that when you get them all in, uh, in that they are flush to the board and solder all four points on each button. The electrolytic capacitors, you'll notice that they have a long lead and a short lead. Long lead and short lead. Long lead is positive. Short lead is negative. C4 right here does not have a, uh, a labeling on it. That is for your smaller of the two capacitors, your one microfarad. Make sure that your uh, positive lead is on the left and that your short lead is on the right. Uh, there's a little plus sign on the left here. That means that your long lead is supposed to go there and your short lead goes on the right. The C2 is labeled C2 uh, 100 micro. The plus sign is on the bottom here and there's nothing on the top. Your long lead goes into the side of, of the footprint with the positive symbol. So long lead on the bottom, short lead on the top. From this perspective, make sure, make sure that you solder both those capacitors in the right way. If you power it on and the 100 microfarad is, in place, is placed backwards, it will pop. And if you don't have the 1 microfarad uh, capacitor placed the right way, again, positive lead on the left, short negative lead on the right, then your uh, your audio chip will not play. Now remember this is a talking combination lock, so that's very important. Now your two ceramic capacitors, they go into the C3 and C1 slots. C1, C1 is labeled C1 0.1U and C3 is labeled C3 0.1U uh, for micro. Now they don't have a polarity, you can place them in either way. Solder those into place, and next we will do our transistor, our regulator, and our two diodes. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about our 5-volt regulator. 
The regulator has a black side with writing on it, that's the front, and the back has just some white or grayish on it, and that's essentially ground. So on the footprint right here labeled 7805, there is a white stripe on the left hand side from this perspective. Make sure that the back is facing the white stripe so that the front is facing this side of the board. I can't place it in, but you get the picture. Um, if that was ambiguous, that explanation, you can see the board uh, at the end so that you can reference how your board looks relative to my board. The transistor, the 2N2222, is placed in the T1 slot labeled T1 2N2222. And there is a flat side with writing on it and a curved side. Now, as you can see on the footprint, there is a curved side and there's a flat side on the right here, curved side on the left. You want to make sure that when you place the component in, that from a bird's eye view, the flat side is matching the flat side and that the curved side is facing the curved side. If you switch that around, your circuit will not work. Your relay will not work specifically. Uh, the uh, red LED is placed right here. It says red LED. Your negative is on the right. Your positive is on the left. Now, what you'll notice is that the LED, like the capacitors, has a short lead and a negative and and a long lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Long lead goes on the left, short lead goes on the right. From this perspective, the green LED is actually clear looking physically, but when it lights up, it lights up green. There's a short lead and a long lead. Same as the red LED, the long lead goes on the left, the short lead goes on the right. Very important. If you reverse those, your circuit will still work, but you will not have the correct indicator LEDs working. Your LEDs will not work. Now, your diode is placed in the D1 slot labeled D11N4004. And the diode has a white stripe on one side, which is your negative side, and black on the other side. On the footprint, there is a white stripe facing the bottom of the board right here. You want to make sure that, that from a bird's eye view, the white stripe on the diode is facing the low is is connected to the lower pin and that the black side of the diode is facing the upper pin so solder those all into place and uh next we will do our uh sockets okay so the two sockets <clears throat> have both have a notch on the left hand side the 16 pin dip socket is placed here the 18 pin dip socket is here on the footprint there is a notch on the left hand side for both of them <clears throat> as I said both notches uh, on the sockets are on the left hand side be very very careful here make sure that when you place the sockets in that from this perspective that the notches are on the left hand side matching the notch on the footprint now same with our our two uh, ICs, the 16-pin IC is placed here, and the 18-pin IC, uh, rather, chip is placed here. Now, on the left-hand side of both ICs, there is a notch. You have to make sure that you're following the uh, orientation. If you if you place this in the the uh, the ICs in the wrong way and you power it up, you'll fry them. So make sure that in the case of the 16-pin chip that the notch is facing the left hand side when you plug it into the socket. Same with the 18 pin microcontroller. Make sure that the notch on the left hand side is facing left in this from this orientation. Matching up the footprints notches to the socket notches and to the IC notches. From this perspective the notches have to be on the left hand side. I can't stress that enough. So solder those and place the, uh, the sockets. Then place your ICs in. Make sure that when you solder your sockets that you don't have any shorts. Very, very important that you don't have any shorts during power up or else you could potentially hurt something. So solder those into place. Next we will do our relay, our two terminal blocks, and our headers. And then we will test it. Okay. Main uh, last assembly step. Uh, we're going to put our relay in our two terminal blocks, our two headers, and our header connector. And the header connector uh, we'll get to later because it selects our modes of programming. So anyway, very easy step. The two terminal blocks placed here and here. You want to make sure that the screw terminals right here are facing outwards, not the plastic. The plastic, if you have the, pl the plastic uh, facing outwards, you're not going to be able to wire in your, your, your uh, siren or your power supply. So make sure that the plastic, in this case, is facing the 78L05 and that the screw terminals are facing outwards. 
Same with the siren. Screw terminals have to face outwards of the board. Now you can solder in your 5 volt relay. There's five pins. It only fits in one way. Three pins on one side, two on the other. Make sure it's flush with the board. Uh, add a healthy amount of solder. And uh, then what you, what you can do is you can solder in your two pin headers. One goes here. For, it's labeled SPK for speaker. We're going to plug our speaker into this one. And the other one uh, goes here. It's labeled JMPR for jumper. So solder those into place. Uh, and then we will plug in our uh, our speaker and we'll also plug in a siren and this, basically I'll give you a full demonstration of how it works so I have plugged in my speaker uh, it just plugs directly into the SPA, SPK 2 pin header there now there's two modes of operation I'm going to show you the siren in a minute we're going to wire in our siren in just a minute but first of all I just want to talk about the two modes of operation we just powered it on in pro in uh, program your own uh, code uh, mode, <laughs> uh, custom program mode. And how you do that is you leave you you leave this uh, two pin header off the board. There, um, the, there's the two pin jumper here. If you power it on with the header shorting those two pins, then it will be uh, place you into default combination mode. That's good in case you have any blackouts because you'll know that the the combination is always 10 10 10 9, and anyone else won't know that. So I just powered it on. I have to program it in my own code. I'll actually turn it off and power it on again so you hear it one more time. Enter combination. Enter combination. So let's do zero three two five. System ready. System ready. So now if someone breaks in or there's an emergency, I can press zero three two five in that order. Uh to uh, activate my siren, which I'll plug in just a second. So, system activated. System activated. Green LED goes on. Now all I have to do is press one button system deactivated. to deactivate it. Now I'll plug in the siren, but first of all, I'm going to uh, unplug my power supply. I'm going to short the two-pin header, and I'm going to power it up again. Default combination. Default System ready. So you don't since you don't have to uh, pl plug in your own combination. It's 10, 10, 10, 9, uh, 10, 10, 10, 9. Uh, it's a default combination. System ready. So if I want to activate my panic alarm right now, I press 10, 10, 10, 9. System activated. System activated. System deactivated. So same operation only it comes with a custom code, which is 10, 10, 10, 9. Uh, now you hear the relay clicking when it, it says system activated and the relay clicking off when it says system deactivated. So let's wire in our siren. The siren has two wires, a red wire and a red and black wire. The red and black wire has two stripes on it, red and black. The red wire is your positive, your red and black wire is your negative. The upper right pin is labeled siren plus in, in small letters. The bottom right one is uh, ground, so siren minus. You want to place your red wire in siren plus and your red and black wire in siren minus. Otherwise, your siren will not work. So here's where it come, becomes a panic alarm. I'll be selling this alter, alternately with a, a uh, solenoid, uh, but in this, con I'll have to make a video for that later. Uh, in this configuration, it's a panic alarm system. If you want, this is everything that comes with the kit right here. Everything. The uh, if you want, I can sell you a uh, a nine volt adapter. So you can plug it into your wall, but it won't come with this kit. If you are interested, send me a message through engineeringshot.com or electroniclessons.com, and uh, we'll work something out. Anyway, I'll power it on. Enter combination. So I'm back. I've taken my uh, jumper off, or my header connector off. I'm going to program in uh, 7, 6, 10, 9. So if I enter in 7619, if I enter in anything else, nothing will happen. Incorrect combination. Incorrect combination. So this will activate my panic alarm. I'm not sure how loud that sounds at your end, but it's really loud here. So in, and in order to disable it, you just have to press any button. So if you have this well hidden, you have it mounted. The uh, siren has a two mounting holes. 
the the board has uh, four mounting holes, one in each corner. There's no mounting hardware, but it's easy enough to mount. As well, the Saren has a uh, two-sided uh, tape on the back, and all you have to do is take off the protective coating, and you can just go stick it to something. It's fr relatively strong. So there you go. Speaker, siren, kit. I will sell this assembled as well. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope you've been able to help. This has helped you out if you've purchased the kit. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Take care, everyone.